All right, so if you just worked through that section and noticed that your screen looked quite a bit different from mine, that's okay. Let's talk about what some of those differences look like. Since recording the course, Power BI has gone through a number of updates that have changed the look and feel and functionality of the platform. So the first thing you'll probably notice is a view like I'm showing here. We've got this default light mode, which is very bright and, and airy and light compared to the default dark mode when Power BI was first released, which had a lot of blacks and dark grays. Now that was just a purely stylistic change, so nothing really to, to talk about there. But where we do see some additional differences is inside of that relationship view, which is now called the model view. So the first thing you've noticed, I'm sure, is the addition of these two new panes here called properties and fields. Now these aren't adding a lot of new tools or features to the platform, they're just making existing features a bit more accessible and user friendly. So now I can select objects from my model, either entire tables like so, or individual fields, either from the model canvas or from the field list here on the right. And as I do so, I have access to different properties that I can customize right here, like the name, synonyms, description, whether or not it's hidden from report view, and I've got advanced features or properties that I'll walk through as well. So table name speaks for itself. Synonyms, these are automatically generated. They don't really mean much in the desktop environment, but if we were to publish this file to Power BI service online, they've got some great features there like natural language questions, which allow users to actually type in questions to retrieve information or insights from their model. So instead of forcing users to type the name exactly as shown, capital AW underscore calendar, you can use different variations with lower cases, spaces instead of underscores, and Power BI will recognize that you're referencing the same thing. And then down here in the advanced options, you've got storage mode, either import, direct query, or dual. Now, this is a little bit outside the scope of this course, but just in a nutshell, to give you a sense of what the difference is, import means that you're grabbing data from your source and actually loading that data into the Power BI environment. Direct query, on the other hand, is when you've got source data that's typically stored in a database, uh, data warehouse, or data lake, uh, like Access, SQL, Azure, and you're asking Power BI to send queries to that source data to retrieve the data that you need, as opposed to actually storing the data here inside of Power BI. So in this case, we're using import because we're actually grabbing data from those CSV files and loading them here into the system. Again, a little bit outside the scope of the course, but just wanted to cover that quickly. And same goes with individual fields here. If you select one individual field, you've got properties at the field level as well. Name, synonyms, description. Display folder is something that's a little bit new. It's purely for the sake of organization. But if you've got fields that are related in some way and you want to organize or group them together, but they don't follow a, a hierarchy, necessarily, you can create a folder just to organize things a little bit more clearly. So to give you a quick example, let's drill into product lookup. You can follow along if you'd like. I'm going to delete this in a minute so you don't have to. Um, but let's say we want to take the model name, the product color, the product name, and style, for instance, and put those into one folder. This is something that's new with this view that I couldn't do before, which is I'm going to select a field, hold control, select the others, like description, name, style, just kind of arbitrary, but let's grab those five. And I've multi-selected those and I can say, let's throw those into a display folder called product detail. Press enter. Boom, we've got that new folder right there inside of our product lookup table containing those five fields. And that change carries through the entire platform. So jumping into the data view, there's that folder I just created. Let's go back to model and then getting rid of it is just as simple. Right click, delete from model. It won't get rid of the component fields. It just gets rid of uh, the folder containing them. So nice little organizational feature right there. Again, you can hide multiple fields from view in one sweeping pass, one go, instead of right clicking each field individually like we used to have to do. And then you've got formatting options here as well. So data type, data format, 
let's actually select a numerical field as well, like order quantity. You can see order quantity is a whole number. You can change the percentage or thousand separator formatting. Um, and then you've got some advanced features as well, like sort by column, the data category, which is great for mapping. Um, so you can set things like region or postal code to help Power BI map those geospatial fields more accurately. And you can change the summarization mode as well. So default to a sum, a count, an average, uh, no summarization at all. And you can do this for any field here in your model. So those are the properties. They're pretty straightforward. I'd recommend kind of working through these, getting comfortable with your options here. And again, these are the same tools that we've talked about and that we'll continue to talk about here in the data view. If you go to the modeling tab, you've got field properties uh, accessible right here in your toolbar as well. So again, these aren't brand new features. They're just making them a little bit more accessible and user friendly here inside of the model view. Now, last thing that I want to quickly cover here is the fact that now we have tabs available at the bottom of the screen, which we didn't have before. And by default, you'll see this one tab called all tables, which means you're viewing your entire model. Now, one common question uh, is how do I make this bigger or smaller? Sometimes you get to this view and you see something like this, which is totally ridiculous. You can't even read what your table names or fields are. Um, they've put the little zoom bar, it's kind of hidden, but it's all the way down here on the right. Um, and you can click the plus sign to make that view a bit bigger. Um, but getting back to the concept of tabs, what these tabs allow you to do is create new views of your model that basically contain subsets of the tables. So if you've got a really complicated model with hundreds of tables and relationships, and you want to kind of zoom in on a specific component of your model, to help users understand how it's built, you can create these different layouts. And check this out. If we want to create a layout um, containing our sales information, we can grab that sales table, just drag it right in the canvas there. And then if we want to show which related tables uh, are connected to sales, we don't have to drag those in. We don't have to create new relationships again. You can just right click anywhere and say, let's add the related tables. Boom, with one click, there you go. It's pulled in calendar, product, territories, and customer tables with those relationships still intact. So again, we're looking at a subset of our all tables view, which is the entire model. We can go ahead and double click, call that something like sales, and then check it out. We'll do the same thing for returns. Where are we? There we go. AW returns, right click, add related tables, pulls in product, calendar, and territories. Double click, call it returns, and there you go. So now we've created these very specific views to help users understand uh, different slices or components of our full model. And then getting rid of those, it's as simple as just clicking that little X and confirming. So there you have it, kind of a quick 10,000 foot view or tour of this new model tab. Hopefully that helps.